Oh, thank you so much. Nice backup. So what's up, everyone? Have you guys been having a good weekend? Yeah. 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 Awesome. Me too. Um, who caught Attack on Titan last night? Woo. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out with me if you made it to that. Um, I, I love watching anime with people. Um, it's just a much different experience than kind of watching by yourself. And I think my favorite way to do that is either something like we did last night where it's like nice and chill, laid back, or taking over a bar. I like doing that. <laughs> or watching in like movie theater settings. Um, has anyone been able to catch one of the recent movies or shows in the theater? Have they, have they done that in Austin? Wait, uh, uh, Alamo uh, like, I mean, Oh, Alamo Draft House like, does it. Like Fate, I, I don't know if uh, anyone caught the, the recent Fate movies. Um, yeah? I know, sometimes depending on the, the, the theater franchise, I know Cinemark sometimes does the, like, Special, like I know they were doing the Ghibli stuff. Um, yeah. Stuff like they have those kinds of events, but I know the Draft House and Cinemark. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they just showed uh, Saga of Tanya the Evil the oh, yeah. movie here yeah. recently. Nice. Yeah. I wish they would do that more. If you guys haven't uh, ever done that, I highly recommend it. Even if it's something you've already seen, like it's just a much different experience being in the theater with the crowd and like. Kind of feeding off like their energy and it's great when uh people laugh at the moments that we hope that they laugh at um or are like nervous at moments when they're supposed to be nervous like you just feel that energy from everyone else in the room so it's it's really fun um so we kind of left today to just hang out and chat again so um what do you guys want to talk about i'll bounce it around to any questions um <laughs> and if you guys don't have questions, yeah, how do you become a voice actor? <laughs> the common one. The common one. Well, what, let's okay. get it out of the room right now. Why don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you, you volunteered for this. Too bad. Come on, Tom. Do I have to? Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. I, mean, I guess I'll stand up. You could. Yeah, you should. Hi guys, I'm Thomas McKee. I'm a voice actor from Dallas. Yeah, by the way. Streaming awesome. the Alexa. Yeah, uh, hey, three viewers, what's up? Um, uh, cool. yeah. Um, so how did you get into voice acting? Uh, luck? Uh, <laughs> well, no, no, so I, I'm a graduate of Columbia College in Chicago for theater, and uh, a t director of mine is a director at Sentai Filmworks, and he said, uh, you need to pursue this. So I literally dropped everything in South Bend, Indiana, Drove down to Texas, got an apartment, a job, and started auditioning. Awesome. What do you have a do you have a day job also? I, I'm a veterinary technician during the day. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Because acting doesn't pay the bills yeah. at all. That's that's one uh, big misconception. Um, people kind of think if I book one job, then I'll buy my Ferrari. Um, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't actually I can work tell like you, that? I haven't worked for Funimation in over a year now. It is, so. there are no guarantees also. Um, so like, it's funny that the first thing you said was luck. Um, Cause I think that does play a, a big part of it. Um, it's, it's kind of everything matching up, like being in the right place at the right time with the right preparation. Um, because it's, it's almost like you have to be lucky to get the right audition. And once you get that audition, you have to deliver and really put on a great performance and to the point that you know the casting director that you don't really know what they're looking for says oh that's exactly what i was thinking um so all that has to happen and then the show has to move forward and go through production for you to actually work um and and have a sort of consistent job um i mean yeah. six different animes that haven't even seen the light of day yet so it's it's not a and it's not a quick journey um, it's, you know, it's all about growth and uh, being resilient, I would say, is like the, the most important attribute of an actor, because you'll get a hundred no's before you hear a yes, and that means you're extremely successful in the industry. I was just told no yesterday. Oh, yeah. I mean, literally, 
every day. It hurt. Yeah, well, and, and that's a big part of it too. Like, um, it's one of my favorite video games. <laughs> yeah, you uh, don't torture yourself. Yeah, don't. I, don't. I forgot about it until you mentioned it. Just don't do it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I mean, um, I, I was just telling someone yesterday, like, my computer is riddled with the graveyard of auditions that never went through. Um, Yours too? <laughs> yeah, every, I think everyone's. I have a folder um, called Fail. <laughs> uh, just delete that. Don't even, don't even do it. Just, no, I, I, I keep, keep the ones I like and I cut it into a demo. Nice. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, um, what, I, what I typically do is um, I give an audition everything that I have while I'm auditioning. So I'm super passionate about the project for the short amount of time that I'm spending on the audition. And then I forget I ever read for the show. And if I book, it's like I've won something. Um, so I get super excited, and it's, it's really fun. Um, and if not, it's like, oh wait, I read for that? Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, um, I've had that experience myself. Like, yeah. I read for that? Oh, yeah. okay, I guess I'll do the work, it's fine. And, you know, before I was like, oh, that would have been so cool, but you can say that every single day. Like, that, that would have been, that could have been, and it's not worth it. Not worth your time to even think that. Um, worse in theater. Yeah. Um, Aaron uh, Yeager is now struggling with the morality of killing Titans. Do you think that will shape his character as the story goes on? Um, who's read the manga? Yeah. <laughs> you guys say nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what happens. Um, they probably but it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. I mean, who, who is caught up all the way through what showed on Toonami last night? <laughs> so just a small handful. So I don't want to spoil it, anything. Yeah. Um, but Attack on Titan, to me, it's it's like a combination of three shows that I really like. So it's Game of Thrones, <laughs> Walking Dead, Hell yeah. uh, and Lost. Um, <laughs> and, and the reason why it reminds me of Lost, and, and this is something I really loved about the show, it, you'd watch an episode, and it would answer one of the questions but that answer would create two more questions. So you're more confused than you were before you watched the episode. And I feel like Attack on Titan does that over and over and over. Um, so, yes, now we know more about the Titans than ever before. And at the same time, I have more questions about what's going on and why, and you know, why are they acting that way and why, you know, What's happening? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh, one, is it difficult struggling between the vulnerability and the tough guy side of Aaron? Personally? Yeah, it's a, it's a balance. Um, I would say for Aaron, even when he's vulnerable, for me, I always think he's still a little angry. Like, like there's still a bit of anger that goes through every single line that I, I perform. Um, but yeah, it's always a challenge finding the right amount without, uh, I mean, in the first arc of season three, he was very like hard on himself and very down. I, I know I, I spent a lot of time in the booth saying like, well, back to emo Aaron, because um, <laughs> that's what he was doing. Um, so it's, it's hard, you know, going from that and switching right away to kill everything. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of the challenges of the character. Um, but I think Mike does a, a really good job balancing that and helping me balance that. Yeah, but when a character goes emo, it's like going through like the emotions of a regular person. You don't just switch to like completely evil over time. Yeah, true. True. Um, so like all that stuff and all those emotions are kind of under the just, forget it, I'm just mad. I mean, he, I think Aaron gets to the point uh, in, in a number of the episodes where, like, he's just seen red. Like, he's just mad. And at that point, like, that's the only emotion that really, like, shines through. Um, and then when he's, he's kind of in his head and thinking, it's most of the time him confused. Like, him, like, not sure how to feel or not sure how to act or, or what is right or what to do. So I hope like as the season goes on, he starts making some of those decisions like definitively. And in a way that's not just like, I have no choice, I have to act, okay, kill. Um, 
you know, hopefully he'll start thinking through a little more. He probably won't. But the ongoing joke through season one was Aaron no. Um, like, I'd say something and then as Armin go, Aaron no! <laughs> and just, there's so many outtakes of me just dropping that in after a line, like, I'm gonna kill him. Aaron, wait! <laughs> it's time to go, Aaron no! <laughs> it's a lot of that. My other question is, do you like the tonal changes they've gone from like complete horror to like political thriller? Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. It gives the, sh the story a little more depth. I think, I think they had to. Like, at the beginning where it was, you know, so much horror and, uh, I mean, still kind of like this interesting thriller type story at the beginning, um, they didn't really answer as many questions as were needed. So I feel like this first part of season three with all the politics, it was so necessary to just like catch everyone up because everyone's like, wait, what? Like, why, why are these people doing this and this? And they needed to just kind of go, okay, here's everything happening. Here's all this info. All right, now back to action. So that's, that's kind of where we are now. I feel like we're getting right up to the point where it's gonna get crazy. If you go just like a board, you're just gonna lose your audience and they're gonna get that game board and because there's like no questions answered. Yeah, exactly. They, I think they, they played it really well. Another thing I like about Attack on Titan is um, there's zero filler. Like, literally no filler. Everything is happening for a reason. Um, I think that's why it took so long for them to come back out with the show, also. They really spend a lot of time ensuring every episode is really high quality and really moving the story forward, and I, I appreciate that. I mean, on one side I'm like, can we get 800 episodes? And on the other side I'm like, no, 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 I like that every episode is really, you know, important and really matters and really drives the story forward. Yeah. Have you played the Attack on Titan games? I have not. I know there's a bunch out and they look really fun. I feel like it could make like a really fun game. Have you? I, I played the second one because I really like character creations and anime video games. I just like, I always pretend I put my name in there. I just like, go on adventures. See, so <laughs> I mean, on, on the Attack on Titan one, you can like have yourself as a scout. Yeah. <laughs> kill the Titans, but like, I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to kill the Titans. Yeah, it'd probably be a lot of me just running away. <laughs> or, I feel like if I was in the world of Attack on Titan, I would die extremely quickly. I would be one of the people that are like, like, Colossal Titan attacks, giant boulders are falling down. I'm like, wait, what? Boulder. <laughs> like in episode, you wouldn't even make it past episode one. No, I wouldn't. I'd be, I'd be dead in the theme song opening. <laughs> Yeah. My questions have always been more personal because I want to know more about the person behind the voices. Sure. So I've talked to past voice actors and past conventions. So, not going to name any names, but after asking this question, I've realized that a lot of voice actors have never even seen or read behind the shows that you played part of. So, do you feel compelled? to like know more about the characters you play as and actually get more into the series that you play as? Or is it more just, this is the role I played and then that's it? It depends. It really depends. Um, I, I feel like learning more about the show before you work on it is a luxury. Like, it doesn't, like, you don't have the choice the majority of the time. Um, so here's like a typical looking scenario. Um, and this has happened to me even like within the last week. Uh, you get an email. What's your avail for next Wednesday? Uh, yeah, I can come in at two o'clock. How long do you need me? Two hours. Okay, two to four. Sweet, what are we working on? No response. Uh, then you show up, you have no idea what you're working on or what your character is. And they're like, so you're working on this show. This is your character. I don't really know too much about the show. Uh, but your character's like 16, and here's what he looks like. Let's just come up with a voice and see what happens. And that's it. That's all you get going into the, to the episode, especially if you're, when you're a minor character. Like, if you're like, random guy D in episode 57, like, they're not going to explain, like, 
what is going on in that story, and they're not expecting you to have learned about the show or watched the show. But I've had a lot of opportunities to play the sort of lead character in these shows, and when I do, I, I really feel compelled to learn more about that character because I know I'm going to be living with them for a while. I know I'm going to be in the booth as that character for quite some time. Um, so I, I do like to learn a little bit about them, try to watch the show in Japanese if it's accessible. Um, and now a lot of the shows are accessible before they're recorded in English, which is awesome. That was just not the case in the past. Like there was no way to get access to any of this stuff. Um, but now because of all of the streaming uh, platforms like Crunchyroll and Funimation Now, um, you can watch some of the stuff you're working on before you record. Um, so I know the streaming schedule for Titan got adjusted a little bit, um, but I think it's 9.45 p.m. Eastern on Sundays now. It's like some weird time. I don't know, I have they to double check. They have to change it uh, because um, some of the, uh, a couple of the episodes were being aired uh, early before oh, they Japan. got leaked. Yeah, they got yeah. leaked by, and not in Japan, so the yeah, distributor ended up saying, no, we're going to hold off on it. It's going to come out. And then it worked out where Funimation had to send out the cooking announcement. It's going to be on Wednesday instead, but no, then uh, I think it was on Friday. It was like, no, it's going to be on Sundays. And the stuff can be on Sundays now in the evenings instead of that. Uh, it used to be 12. It was like 10 yeah, in the morning in Pacific time, and it was like noon, almost yeah. o'clock here. Yeah, so like with Titan, I know when the new episode is going to come out in Japanese, and um, I, I've been a fan of the show since the beginning, so it's nice that I get, you know, sort of two birds, one stone. I get to watch the next episode, because it always ends on a cliffhanger, uh, and kind of see what I'm in for. Um, and it's, it's really helpful, because if it's a big Titan screeny episode, I know not to book anything anywhere near that thing because I probably won't be able to talk after. But if it's like, oh, Aaron didn't even say anything, I know it's going to be an easy day and I can just book something else right after. Um, but on top of that, I, I am really passionate about the, the, the work that I have and the shows that I'm involved with and I really enjoy anime. Um, I really enjoy watching these shows. I've been fortunate to work on stuff that I really like, um, so that's helpful in learning more about it. Um, but yeah, if, when I have the luxury of watching the show in Japanese before I work on it, it's super helpful because I kind of know what's up, kind of know what, what I'm getting into. Yeah. But once, um, keep going. Yeah. The, the only thing I was getting out of that small detail I was referring to is that there's voice actors that have played the roles and gone to conventions and talk about these shows, but then a little side note afterwards, I asked them this question. They still have not watched or read anything about it. That's the only detail I've ever put out there is that even afterwards, even after the booking and after all this, they still, they don't really do anything with the series that they've quit. That's yeah. Awesome. I mean, it's common. It's really common. Like, uh, sometimes it's hard to find your work. Um, sometimes, you know, you're just a minor role. Um, and it's like, well, I kind of know what I did. and. I'm not really caught up with the story. I'm in episode 50-something, so there'd be a lot of effort to get caught up to understand what my impact was. Um, and some people just aren't into anime. It's just not their thing, so it'd be like, you know, more effort to go back and rewatch everything again. Um, but, yeah, I mean, everyone kind of treats it differently. I, I just know, like, kind of where I stand. I, I enjoy watching the shows, and I enjoy also not only seeing my performance back and kind of, you know, listening back to it and going, oh, I could have done that a little different, or that sounds good, or that's an interesting choice, because sometimes you get multiple takes, and they'll choose one of the, you know, three, five, 20 takes, they'll take one of them. So it's interesting to see how they puzzle it together. Um, and then to hear all the other actors in the show, it's fun to hear that back. But, yeah, it's not like a requirement to watch your work back. Yeah? Um, for the, the first season of Sword Art Online, Kirito was a pretty overpowered character. Were you worried about humanizing him and making him relatable, or did you just want to play a powerful character? And would you play more open characters? 
Uh, would I play more OP characters? Yes, all day long. Um, I think I have a few that uh, are a bit OP. Um, Meliodas. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be more down the, the pipeline that are a bit overpowered. Um, humanizing Kirito? Uh, sometimes in the show. Sometimes. There's times when, yes, that's really important, and there's times when he definitely needs to be confident and show what he can actually do. Um, and I, I, I think that was more challenging for me than playing him as a, a sort of real character. Um, I think finding those moments to make him sound tough and, and really to show um, even more confidence than like I would actually show. But did that concern happen over time or was it when you first started? It was hard finding it like episode, I think it's four when he's walking across the bridge. It's one of my favorite moments. Um, and getting attacked by all the red players. Um, oh. oh yeah, one of my favorite moments in the show. Uh, did you guys see that there's someone dual wielding in that scene? Yes. Did you catch that? Yes. Uh -oh. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it then. Yes. Go back and watch it. There's a dude in the background, he has two axes. Right. Like, oh, dual wielding, beginning of the show, gotcha. So um, just no Kito. kidding. I guess Kirito stole it from that guy. <laughs> um, when we record, we kind of go line by line. Um, I'll, I'll get you next. I'll get you next. We, we kind of go line by line. Um, so there's moments where you're looking very closely at like a few frames of the show. Um, like, did anyone catch the episode of Alicization last night? Okay, you guys should totally watch Alicization. One, it's awesome. Um, I love the new arc. Uh, two, the animation is probably the most beautiful of the whole series. Like, the detail, we, like, there's moments where they're uh, chopping down this tree, and the sunlight is coming through the leaves of the trees around them, and it's like you can see these different shades of yellows and greens, like, on their skin. The it's it, it's amazing. Like like I mean we're really looking close at the the movements of their mouths and what's going on and their facial expressions. So like I, I notice all these small details and like I can't believe how much detail went in to light coming through trees. Like it, it's incredible. Um, but last night, I was watching the episode, and um, there's this one line that I had where he almost says a, uh, a unit of measurement that doesn't exist in, in the underworld. He, he almost says the word meter, and he means mill, or whatever their measurement is. And um, it, it happens really quick. It happens really quick. He, he says, like, it's five mills down, down uh, from us, or something like that. And that line took over 30 minutes to do. Um, and it goes by like this. Like, he just, you know, like, like in the show, it's literally a couple words. But for me in the booth, it was one of the most difficult lines of that episode, just trying to get that to kind of hit the right way. Um, and it's... It's something I, I really appreciate about, um, about dubbing and when we can dub in that manner. Um, if you look closely and listen to the lines closely in Sword Art Online, uh, the director and the uh, writer, Alex Von David, takes like so much care to keep everything extremely consistent. Um, like He'll have characters say things that reflect words he's written five years ago in season one. Um, and he goes into detail that much to make sure that they all line up. Like, his scripts are a beautiful piece of art. Um, so I, I know those things flash by in a second, but um, when, I, when I see it back, I'm like, wow. Like, it, it, it just fits so nicely because of all the effort of the team that went into it. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate that part of it. 
of dubbing in the work that I do. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't even know if I answered your question. No. <laughs> um, since we're talking about the Star Online, the dual wielding axe. Yeah. For the uh, bridge version, they actually openly make fun of that. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> I like that those guys picked up on some of the details. Like, I mean, Kirito being overpowered, I know he's a jerk in the <laughs> British <laughs> series. That's sort of putting it lightly. Um, so yeah, it's, that's fantastic that they picked up on that. Yeah. Um, don't have me while I eat my potato. <laughs> they need character for Sasha. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was going to say, um... Is that a raw potato that you're just munching down? No, I boiled it this morning. Oh, okay, good, good. I was going to say, wow, you're really in character eating a raw potato. Oh, yeah, potato. no, I just ran into my friends and they're like, you really didn't get it. I was like, because I have, I have, my glass is Brahani too, so Jessica Cavill's already seen nice. it as well. Um, nice. I was going to add, or kind of a little deviating a bit from the anime, but I know that in the, uh, we've seen Adrian the Fragrance on the show, the commercial, and then there was the, um, Zach had produced that, like, Ladybug and Cat Noir fragrance in, uh, I think at Zara? I can't remember the brand. I think it was Zara, the brand. Yeah. But, and I tried to look for it. I can't find it, unfortunately. But you know about the, I'm sure, Nina, do you have Adrian <laughs> tissue? Wait, do I have Adrian the, <laughs> Adrian tissues? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, I, I love seeing all of the uh, like the stuff that they're creating around the show. I wish Zag would hook me up so I could sport I mean, Adrian I the fragrance. I mean, I don't want the Zag box, but I don't want to use them because it's Adrian. You can have them if you want. <laughs> Oh, you want to hook me up with some yeah. Adrian tissues? I have hair net. I have hair net too if you want. So I can do the reaction challenge and cry and wipe my if face with Adrian? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll take some Adrian tissues. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Guys, that is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. I, I really need, like, to pimp my uh, my bathroom out with all miraculous stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like Adrian toothbrush yeah, and face know. wash. I'm I, sure you your want daughter would love that. Yeah. <laughs> I have marinette to go to what There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so kind of what he was talking about earlier with, uh, you know, getting into the shows, I know it takes a little bit more or it requires a little bit more time because you can't, you can't watch it, but have you ever found time to want to read the manga to kind of learn a little bit more? Yeah, I've had the, the sort of desire to do that, but I've always stopped myself because because of a few things. Um, one, when you read something, it's much easier to use your imagination and make sort of choices on how you feel about characters, how you think they should act, how you think they should sound. Um, I've actually had a lot of people say, when I, when I read the book, the only voice I heard of that character was your voice. Like in their head, it was like me performing the lines as that character. That's so cool um, that people have kind of cast me internally. Um, but I, I feel like I would do the same thing, and it's not always the case. Sometimes, like, the anime is different from the manga. The journey for the character is different. What they know is different. Um, so if I'm a part of a show, I kind of want to stick to whatever the anime side is doing. So I, I always kind of hold back and not go forward. Um, as much as I want to, especially with, like, Sword Art Online light novels, um, because, yeah, major cliffhangers. Uh, Attack on Titan every episode. Um, and then Seven Deadly Sins. Like, who's seen all of the anime for Seven Deadly Sins? <laughs> Did anyone, like, Google what happens next at the end of it? Like, I, I typed it into my browser and then had to, like, close my laptop. Like, I was that close to, like, looking up spoilers because I was like, I can't wait, like, however long it's going to take for them to make this again. I, I had finished reading it before season two even started. See, you knew. I, I have no, I still have no idea what happens. Do you think you'll go and like read any of these animes once they're, or the mangas once they're done with the anime? Maybe, maybe. I mean, in a way it would almost make me feel like a little sad if, they, if the anime is done and I have to leave a character. Like, it would almost make me feel sad to kind of go through the journey again. Um, That's fair. 
the the times also that you spend in the booth, like I try not to think like, oh, I wish I could change that, or or I wish it was this way. It's kind of like you go and you live in the moment, and that's kind of it. Like that's that's the experience that that was was there for you. So I try not to think back on it too much. That's why a lot of times people are like, what were you thinking when you're in the booth at that moment? I'm like, I can't can't remember. I was just kind of in that moment so deeply. Uh, and then it kind of goes. Um, but that's that's kind of it, you know? Um, so it's hard to go back and try to relive those things. That's fair. I yeah. remember last night you were, God, we were watching the newest episode, of Attack on Titan, and you made the commentary like, maybe we'll finally learn what's in the basement. What's in the basement? <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> maybe awesome. this season. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the and, new opening of season three, like it ends on this like zoom in shot of the basement. And I'm like, really? You're going to tease me like that? Come on, guys. I still don't know anything about this. Yeah, and I have a friend who reads forums online and talks to people who are caught up all the way to the manga. So one time we were driving out to lunch like last week and he was like, I know what's in the basement. I could totally spoil it for you. <laughs> he's like, but he's like, but I'm not. I had that happen to me. I was trying to, I forget, I was trying to get caught up on stuff or looking for a specific reason. This was, I ended up spoiling it for myself because I was like, I was trying to just see what the timeline in general was and I spoiled it for myself. Oh no. And now I'm just waiting. I'm like, when are we going to get to the stuff? Yeah, I'm knowing that those answers are out there and that they're accessible is even more like, nerve-wracking yeah. uh, to try to like stop yourself from doing it. But I really don't want to be spoiled. Like I just want to go on that journey with the internet. Um, yeah. I have two questions. One for you, are you talk about I will, yeah. Um, so I fly out um, sort of immediately after. So what we might do is kind of wrap up the Q&A a little early and start autographs a little early so I make sure to get to everybody. Um, so, yes? I mean, I still, like, even that one, I answer it with, like, a ton of responses, like a ton of different characters, because what I really try to do is find something uh, to connect with, even if I have nothing in common with the character, because um, there's definitely characters that like I personally have nothing in common with um, But I still try to find something there to like Connect it and, and put a little sort of piece of myself in that character um, So it's, it's hard to play favorites um, I mean I can tell you some of the things that like are really special about certain characters, you know that that I kind of love like um like, I have sort of a special connected connection to, like, Rita Kumara. Um, I feel like a lot of my actual personality is in uh, Rin when he's kind of happy. Um, like, it's just kind of me. Um, you know, I, I, I connect in a lot of ways with, like, Kirito, especially with his, like, relationship with Asuna. Um, like, there's a lot of authenticity there that I, that I put into the show. Um, I mean, with Aaron, like, I'm not that angry, but I mentioned yesterday, like, I still find a moment in my life to, like, bring some authenticity to, like, Aaron's anger. It's like me when I'm in traffic. Or, um, or uh, I mentioned yesterday I have two Maltese poodles. They're like little white fluff, fluff ball dogs. Um, and I had a, a bag of chips that I really wanted to eat. And those poodles, they ate my chips. Right away, I can just feel the anger. The, the, my blood just started pumping for those poodles. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, obviously, some characters I get to spend more time with than others. Um, like Asbel Lant in Tales of Graces, um, I had 3,600 lines as Asbel. Um, and I, I feel like, um, you know, there's a lot of sort of me in that character also. Um, and, and I just think about those recordings and it was one of the happiest times in my life because uh, I got to work with one, an amazing crew, Wendy Lee, if you guys don't know who Wendy Lee is, she's one of the nicest people in the world, super talented director and actress. Um, so I got to spend 
an entire summer with her. Uh, then I got married, went on my honeymoon, came back and recorded more uh, Tales of Graces. So I only have like happy memories of that recording time. Um, honestly, I just keep going down Wikipedia and telling you positive things about the characters I've, I've been able to play and the roles that are kind of special. Um, it's, it's really hard to narrow it down. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take one more question. And then, um, if you guys didn't get to ask a question, um, ask, ask me at autographs. So I'm gonna go right there. Uh, yes. Yeah. What's the first um, show you voiced? So my very first time in the booth was on Power Rangers. Um, I was just <laughs> a kid in the background um, doing something called Walla. So sometimes you see uh, people in the background and when they're recording, they can't catch um, all of the uh, audio from those recordings. So the very first time I stepped in the booth was on that show. There are a few anime that I recorded um, when I was younger, um, and I, I'm trying to place the very first one. I know a couple of my first sort of bigger roles, um, so I, I would say the the one with the most lines when I was younger was as a uh, young Vash in a show called Trigon. Yes! Um, yeah! <laughs> awesome opportunity to play that. Um, and then my first lead was as Shugo uh, in Dot Hack Sign, Legend of the Twilight Bracelet. That was the first show that I was on uh, that was on Toonami. Um, so it, it's kind of cool to play uh, a kid going into a game as a kid, only to grow up to play another kid in, that goes into a game as an adult. <laughs> um, good times, good times. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think Power Rangers was the very first time I got thrown in the booth, and it's, uh, it's kind of cool to, uh, to now make, make friends with a bunch of the uh, folks that worked on that show. Um, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Another really fun panel. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed my uh, my time here in Austin um, and the event and hanging out with you guys. So um, if you'd like to grab an autograph, um, we'll probably set up and start the autographs a little early. I'll, I'll let Coach take it from here. Yeah, I'm the guy with the information on that. So here's what's going to happen. Uh, if you are a VIP, See this gentleman right here? You're gonna wanna watch that face. I know it looks sketchy, but he's safe, okay? <laughs> Go out to those black tables. He's gonna put you next to those tables. That's where you're gonna line up. We're gonna get you back in here as quickly as possible because this man's got babies here and he's gotta go catch a flight and we're gonna get him out of here. We promised him that. Okay. They're enjoying the maid cafe right now. They are, because <laughs> they're smart. <Okay. laughs> the rest of you, if you're not VIPs, that is not a problem. You know where you lined up on the wall out there, kind of, kind of you know, right across from the dealer's area? Go get back in that line and we're gonna get you right back in here. 